Good afternoon, allies. My name is Hosh Nasi, and a little over a month ago, I crashed my Phantom IV into a tree. Purely by my own fault. I had no one else to blame but myself, but that doesn't stop me at all. No, I went forward and I fixed it. This was the case um, before or after the accident. You can see it's cracked. Um, the landing gears are all cattywampus and what it actually the most damage was it totally bent the camera gimbal the gimbal was destroyed and uh, it would still fly it, all the mechanisms to maintain balance and gps and flying perfectly fine but the camera destroyed so i went forward i bought replacement parts i bought a replacement case landing gear and camera gimbal camera gimbal very expensive guys if you're thinking about getting one of those little protector arms for your gimbal i would recommend you do that and here she sits today, all back together, gimbal back on, new gimbal, and everything's back in working order. The good news is it's actually relatively easy to repair one of these once you have some patience, pack your patience, and really there's not that many tools that you need to do the job. You're going to need a precision set of Allen keys, small Allen keys, 5x64 is uh, the one to be using primarily for the undercarriage. You also need a Phillips head screwdriver, small Phillips head screwdriver, a number one, and also bring a flat head. And the reason you'll need a flat head is to remove some of the connectors. It really helps. I also highly recommend a set of tweezers that you can use for electronics. Something that has a, a needle, not a needle, but a very fine tip because you're going to need to get in there and pull screws out, sometimes place screws, and you'll definitely want the precision that tweezers offers. I prepared a bit of a time lapse that walks through how I did it, and I'm gonna give you voiceovers and my tips and tricks to get the job done there. Also, big, big recommendation to go find yourself a spudger. Spudger is a plastic, almost like a flathead screwdriver or pry bar that allows you to open the case around here on the Phantom 4 much easier than using a screwdriver without damaging it. Spudgers are gonna be really important. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the camera assembly. To do that, you're going to need a 1.5 millimeter hex key. I recommend you get something with a T handle and a longer shank that can get in past the landing gear. So you can see I'm kind of messing around with my hands inside, outside the landing gear. Don't mess with that. Just just go get the longer ones. Take your time with this too. They're, they're very small screws on the camera assembly and, and you probably want to reuse them because generally they're fine in the event of an accident. Now that I have the screws all taken out, I take out uh, a flathead screwdriver and I disattach, detach the assembly from the body. I recommend you get a spudger for this. I'm using a precision flathead screwdriver. That is a bad idea. Even though the gimbal is made of magnesium, you're going to want to use a spudger. It's going to be better on your frame, the plastic frame of the Phantom. Take your time with this. There are two very precise, very small, delicate ribbon cables that attach the assembly to the Phantom. And if you're looking at it from the point of view of the Phantom flipped over with the back end of it facing you, then it's going to be on your right hand side, the two ribbon cables. To detach those ribbon cables, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. And there will be, I believe, four screws, uh, two for each ribbon cable that hold a very small piece of flat metal to hold the ribbon cables in place. As you can see as I fold this over, I'm exposing them right there on the lower right hand side. With the metal strips removed, the camera assembly will just pop right off. The ribbon cables are not held on very tightly. That's why you need those metal arms, so be careful of that. Now, um, note how beat up my gimbal is there. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. Really bummed me out the day I crashed it. Going back to tools for a second, I, I really want to tell you how important it is to get yourself a nice pair of precision screwdrivers. You can see these are total garbage. They're really thin, they're metal, they're not knurled, they don't, you can't get a good purchase on them. These ones with the plastic handles that are big and fat, much, much better. Now there's another piece of metal similar to the two you removed on the right side, and what it does is it's the connectors for the RF and the compass and they have very little tiny tiny connectors that you have to be very very delicate with. I use the tweezers through the whole thing. To access the connectors simply take out the two Phillips head screwdrivers and remove the small metal sheet that I'm pulling off right there. Now the cables are color coded. I highly recommend you take a picture on your phone like I'm doing right now to remember exactly the orientation of the compass and the antenna for the controller. 
I referred to that thing, I think, no less than four times when I was messing around with those cables. So do highly recommend that. At this point, it's time to take out your two millimeter Allen head and start pulling out all the other screws. Now, I do want to make a note. There are two screws. I'm looking at them right now, Phillips head screws that are underneath the camera assembly, and I'm going to tag them right here. These screws are really easy to forget about, and what you need to do is remove them because they're going to stop you from taking the clamshell, the, the, the case of the Phantom 4 apart. It's really easy to remember to take out all those two millimeter screws, but if you forget those Phillips head, you're going to be prying on that middle part, possibly damaging your case, and you're not going to know why. So just do yourself a favor and remove those now. All right, so you've removed all those two millimeter screws. You think you're done and time to pry, right? Well, not yet. You got to pop off the little reflectors that I'm doing right there, and then peel off this adhesive strip, and then there are three more two millimeter Allen screws under each motor. You got to get all of those out because they will stop you from being able to remove and separate the two uh, halves of the case. Okay, so you've got all the screws out. Now it's time to get dangerous. Let's start pulling apart the case. I put an arrow there. That's the spot that is probably the hardest to separate from the Phantom 4. And primarily the front and the sides are the most difficult. The back is actually kind of easy to get started with. I had to separate mine a couple of times and I found that actually starting with the back became the much easier way of doing it. But to start, you can work on one of the arms from the motor and work your way in. I recommend taking a, two spudgers, one to pry and then the other to kind of like hold your space as you move forward, um, cl unclipping, if you will, the sections of the frame that are holding together. Now, yeah, it, it's really hard to do it the first time because you really don't know what you're looking at when it turns like, well, do I, do I leverage one side, the top, more than the bottom, vice versa? The problem is, is that they are... Um, they hold onto each other kind of equally and you almost have to push and pull and push and pull at the same time to kind of free them the first time because they're kind of kind of rigid so take your time this is the most frustrating part possibly stressful part of the entire the entire effort so really do take your time I took my time here and time lapse is showing it I took a long time to figure out how to open it for the first time Okay, yippee, I got them separated, things are good. Now, there are a ton of wires on the bottom half of the Phantom 4. That's your antenna and your compass, those things we disconnected from the body when we took the camera assembly off. So note where those cables are routed if you have to replace your landing gears. And there are special grooves that are along the sides of the lower frame that you will need to route the cabling through. I actually pinched one of the cables to the point that it was unusable when I first did this swap and I had to I had to recover a cable from the old damaged lower half. So once you've got that sorted out, I brought out my new case. This is it right here, and I'm going through another separation anxiety uh, situation, pulling the two halves apart. I'm only going to be using the bottom half of this uh, of this case, and I'll be attaching the new landing gears to that. Okay, go landing gear by landing gear if you've got to do that. If you don't, go ahead and skip ahead on this. But basically, you want to route the cabling from the landing gear into the lower half um, you'll notice the two cables, the white cables noted here. This is where I would reiterate that it is an extremely important thing to have a driver that goes beyond the landing gears. I had such a hard time, you can see my left hand and my right hand are, are I'm using those little angled Allen wrenches because I couldn't find my driver set. The, <laughs> they're just a pain to get around the landing gear. So just get yourself a set and it's going to save you a ton of pain and headaches in the in the future if you ever have to go through this process again and they're just good to have if you're working on any kind of electronics. While you're working on the antenna pieces, note the connectors and this little brass piece that connects to what looks like a logic board there, it will come loose on you. So make sure that you go through the process of connecting the connectors uh, gingerly. It goes in only one way. It's not actually a slide in. It's more of like a press fit, if you will. I can't explain anything other than that. Just press it in.
So once you have everything kind of like routed and the landing gears in place, you're going to need to feed some of the lines down through the body of the chassis. And I just want to reiterate that when you do this, look for the little notches, the, the notches that retain cables. How you'll know is the cable will obviously be the same dimension as the notch. You can slide it in there, and if you have your old case, you'll note that they use tape to secure the cable to the sides of the the, the frame. So you should do that as well. I used light electrical tape to do that. Okay, so now you've got your landing gears repaired, you have your cables routed, and you believe you've got them tethered out of the way so that they won't get crimped under the frame when you start snapping it all together. Okay, what do you do? Well, look what I've done here. You can see how I pulled all the cable ends up and out of the chassis, the bottom of the chassis where the camera assembly would be. You have the controller connectors, those little white connectors. Those connect to the logic board on the upper half. And then you have all the little uh, antenna, the white, black, dark gray, light gray colored cables that are also sticking out over the top of that little lip. And you see I'm, I'm double checking. Those are grounding spots, those copper areas. Make sure that you get those out of the way because those copper grounds are supposed to go on top of the little white tabs that you took out with the Phillips head screwdriver earlier. Make sure you get those out of the way. So once you feel confident that you've gotten the cables out of the way, what I've done here is I just kind of set the bottom half on the top half with the top half upside down. And I'm just checking to make sure that none of the cables look like they're pinched. I'm feeling around. I'm, I'm doing my due diligence to try and not pinch anything. And this is where those tweezers come in real handy. You can see I'm, I'm using them right there to get them out of the way. And actually, I'm using them on that ground connection. That is important. You need to ground it if you can. So you know, take your time. I can't iterate this enough because I did pinch a cable. So if that happens, you should be ready to reuse some of the old cables that you had with the old landing gears if you are doing what I had to do. If you didn't have to replace the landing gears, you might find yourself having to buy some of those cables. I would recommend at this point, this is a recording that I did uh, in March, no, sorry, June of 2016, there's not a whole lot of Phantom four parts on the market for just cable sets. So you kind of just have to buy the landing gears and replace the whole that whole cable that way. But then you have some spares. The landing gears are relatively inexpensive on Amazon. I'll post a link in the description and you can check them out. Okay, so you've gotten your clamshells shoved together and this is where I used my cell phone camera to get a really good shot of the different wires for the antennas and the compass. You can see I'm using them color-coded. Uh, I'm just using the color-coded wires to snap back into the connectors using the picture that I took before I took the Phantom 4 apart. Very valuable to use technology to support you in these cases. <laughs> this is a good example of using your cell phone to help you um, really alleviate a headache that would have come for, from putting these cables together incorrectly. So use the camera. Save yourself a headache. So at this point I decided what the hell, let's pull out the uh, the new camera, camera assembly. Note when you do this, you probably have to cut the camera out of the foam. Do not force it in any way. Cut it out. Use a razor blade and cut it out. Okay, don't yank, don't pull, don't do anything. Basically, yeah, now I'm just going to reconnect the gimbal using the cables that are attached to the camera unit here and take your, now do everything in reverse, right, that we talked about. You're gonna connect the two connectors, then you're gonna use the little metal strip with the two screws, connect that back down. You're gonna do the same thing again for the compass and for the radio antenna. Just connect it back down again with that small piece of metal. Guys, at this point, screwing it all back together should be pretty easy. The screws match the screws that you're gonna use. There are um, two sizes, again, for the outer and just go in reverse of what I've done so far and you should be able to do it pretty easily. Note how I've positioned the camera to support its own weight against the landing gear. That is kind of the trick to do it so that you can um, you can manipulate the connectors without putting too much strain on the cables. You see, you can just sit there and it's it's fine, it's out of the way, it's not it's not hurting anything, okay? And then you just take it and you can you can slide it in and if you've taking your time with it and you haven't broken any of the connectors it should just kind of snap down with a bit of force just evenly applied to the top like that or the bottom I guess you could call it and that's pretty much it like I said go in reverse for putting the screws back together and back into place reattach the adhesive for the lights 
and then put the lights, the little light covers, the plastic light covers back on, and, and that's really all there is to it. Believe it or not, it's actually not that hard. You just need to take your time. And guys, last thing, you will have to do a full firmware upgrade. So start it up like you normally would. Make sure that you're following the process. Do the, um, go to the kind of home screen for the DJI app, click on the firmware, click on the update, slide to update. It'll load it to your iPad, then connect your iPad to the DJI the Phantom 4, and it should load. Take your time with it. Uh, I think I had to do like two rounds of patches. And guys, that'll pretty much do it. She'll be back up and running, taking beautiful time lapses, which is what I like to do with mine, and using it in parts of my vlog. Now, this took the better part of an afternoon to do it, and again, I was filming a lot and trying to frame shots and, and do different things, so you could probably do this in a couple of hours if you take your time. Again, this is not a competition, it's not a race, it's a, it's a marathon, so make sure you're doing the right thing. Again, uh, this was filmed in June around of 2016, and it's taken me months to get it all ready so parts may become available to replace things like the gimbal motors and whatnot at the time that I recorded this they were not available and these were the parts that broke and that is a bummer because it would have been a lot cheaper to just do that believe me so again uh, they make stabilizers now that you can buy 3d printed stabilizers for the gimbal that could have helped I don't really know uh, if it's peace of mind for you, go ahead and buy one. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like nine bucks or less on eBay right now. Anyway, guys, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I do daily videos. A lot of the time it includes drone footage. I'm a vlogger. I'm a DIYer. I'm a father and an engineer. And I would love it if you came and watched more of my videos. And I'll talk to you tomorrow if that sounds good. Okay, thank you. All right, see ya. <laughs>